All right, it's 10 o'clock, uh, we can begin. Uh, we have 24 people. If somebody wants to join in, uh, I will admit them as we go along, okay? So uh, I trust everybody had a good and safe Thanksgiving. Now we are back to, we are back to our schedule here. All right, so a couple of admin things here. This is a week for week four. Now, as you can tell, during this week, we're going to have a quiz, which is going to be worth about five, well, 5% 5 of our, uh, of your mark. And this, um, quiz is going to be an online quiz you will have a whole week to do this and it's going to be an open book quiz and as i always do my online quizzes um, you will have two attempts uh, at that quiz it's going to be an online quiz so when whenever i launch that it's going to be probably tomorrow or maybe the day after from that day you're going to have a whole week to complete that two attempts and the last attempt goes on record. Not the best of two, but the last one. I have to throw a couple of curveballs at you because this is not a supervised test. So uh, uh, usually when that happens, uh, uh, things are quite accurate as far as uh, the evaluation process goes on. Yeah? Some people have, uh, have participated in my classes, uh, they know what's going on. So uh, once you have that, um, there will be no extensions. The reason why I give people two attempts is uh, that uh, sometimes you have a problem with your internet drops out or something. So my advice is that uh, if you have a bad connection and it doesn't work first time, do not log in a second time right away. Maybe there is something wrong with your internet. Uh, try to figure out what's going on and log in for the second time. Uh, okay, so uh, let's go on with this class. We only have an hour and we have a lot to cover. So I'm just going to queue up my, my lesson for today. And the lesson is, oh, Jesse is knocking at the door, admit. Welcome, Jesse, okay. Uh, all right, so uh, today's topic is uh, telephony, USOC pots and 25 pair color code. Telephony is the topic of the day and under the telephony, falls the USOC, uh, USOC uh, stands uh, for Universal Service Ordering Code. It has to do with the color code configuration of the telephone jacks and telephone lines. Uh, POT uh, stands for basically plain old telephone service. It's the uh, most basic telephone service that you see less and less of. However, it's still going strong and it's going to go like that for the next few years if not more. Uh, and we're going to take care of the 25 pair color code, okay? Just a little bit of uh, background. Most people know who I'm talking about. Uh, he invented the telephone when he was 29 years old. His first word spoken on the telephone was, Watson, come here, I want to see you. It was in Mar on March. Uh, Benjamin Franklin, no, <laughs> uh, uh, it was March 10th, 1876. Um, uh, then he refused to keep telephone in his office, which is really interesting, uh, considering uh, the use of the cell phones that we, uh, uh, we participate in today. And the reason why he refused to have a telephone in his office was because it was a distraction <laughs> from his work. <laughs> Uh, so that was the guy who invented the telephone. He didn't want to have the telephone in his office. Uh, so what inspired him to invent this device? Uh, his mother, Eliza, was hard of hearing. So um, 
he was uh, researching and in trying to invent things that would help uh, hearing impaired people to uh, to uh, to have their life better. Uh, and he had a good reason to do that. Okay. Uh, speech pathology was of his interest since early years of his life. <clears throat> of course, uh, we are talking about uh, Mr. Alexander Graham Bell. That is the picture of the gentleman who made all this happen. Okay. All right. Uh, the first telephone looked like this. Uh, this was a mild piece or a microphone. And that was the earpiece you would take this earpiece and put it right to your ear and you would speak to this mouthpiece uh, and that was the way telephone worked okay uh, this was something that's called centennial transmitter in some museums and probably in Brantford I have not been to that museum but you probably see that you'll be able to see this uh, as a museum uh, exponent all right uh, then uh, telephone invention of telephone was a, such a big deal that they actually made movies about a about using telephone and on this here uh, picture you see an actor portraying uh, using a telephone actor uh, portraying an, an actor portraying Alexander Graham Bell uh, in a silent film so that's uh, that's uh, something kind of interesting because uh, um, this was about using a telephone and the film was silent, okay? It was a silent movie. Right? Uh, so uh, it was about using, so it was a big deal. Well, I'm not I'm surprised that uh, it was a big deal. Yes, it was a big deal because the, the only way of communicating between people was writing a letter and it would be a few days before you, or maybe a week or two before someone would get a letter. Another way of communicating would be sending a pigeon, right? um, but you only have so many homing pigeons uh, if, if you wanted to send a message to somebody, or the other uh, way was a telegraph. Uh, March in March 10, 1876, Alexander Graham Bell successfully telephones Thomas Watson for the first time, and you can see that it was a big deal, people would dress up in suits three-piece suits and they would pose to the photograph that would be basically in the newspapers all around the world uh, and that picture was about <laughs> using a telephone okay now um before long something uh must uh, something had to be invented which would be uh, telephone exchange offices or central office uh, telephone exchange was uh, basically a uh, um, um, a switchboard on which uh, there would be operator sitting and if somebody wanted to make a phone call to someone uh, they would pick up the handset and if they pick up the handset one of those lights would light up and the operator would uh, patch uh, their apparatus right here this would be a microphone and it would be earphones or headphones and they would talk to the person and then and basically the operator would say who would you like to speak to and if there was a small town they would say ah can you connect me to mrs smith okay i can connect i know where mrs smith is and uh, she would patch you through to mrs smith and you would have a conversation with mrs smith uh, okay and um when it came to big cities bigger cities uh, the you know first telephone numbers would appear and the telephone exchange would look much bigger than that so you would not go by the last names because they you know the, in the bigger cities the operators would just not be able to remember everybody's name so the early telephone exchanges would like this it would be all human operated and of course this picture here would be done uh, for some local newspaper or some sort of a journalism purposes. Uh, people would dress up to, to, the, uh, uh, to the, for the for the picture and you could see that uh, it, it's pretty much posed so there will be people operating as normal basis and there will be some supervisor there will be another supervisor they will be positioned for the photograph. Okay? So that that's uh, basically the Telephone exchange would be something that's called central office, and central. The purpose of the central office is to patch the telephone conversations between people. Uh, now, 
these days, uh, uh, today, this is what telephone exchange looks like. From that, uh, from that to this, there are no humans anymore. Everything happens with the, in, in, a, in a computerized way. Uh, people dial numbers by themselves. They do not ask to be connected anywhere. Uh, and uh, everything looks like basically IT based, information technology based uh, uh, operation. So that's, uh, that's what today's telephone exchange looks like. And sometimes those buildings, they just run by themselves. And there are no humans there at all, other than for occasional service. Now the tech stuff, this is uh, basically a telegraph. How uh, would telegraph work? It would be a transmitting and receiving apparatus and how this thing would work. It would, it would be a magnetic uh, electromagnet on one side and another electromagnet on the other side. And there would be a wire connecting those two. And those wires you would see along the railroad tracks. There will be multiple wires. And the other wire, the ground or earth, was provided by the ground. So if uh, one circuit was closed, here would be the battery, the circuit would be complete. Uh, then uh, the electromagnet would kick in. Uh, and uh, on the other side, the electromagnet would also kick in. So uh, you would be able to see the dots and dashes on the other side. And there would be a tape running with, uh, with some sort of a rapidograph or, or, or um, um, some sort of like automatic pen, or sometimes there would be uh, other ways of impressing thing, uh, the dots and dashes on the, um, uh, on the tape uh, made of paper. And uh, what was used for that would be a Morse code. Later on, uh, things were improved, uh, so there would be a microphone here, and there would be a speaker here. Okay. So this, you would speak to this part, and instead of closing and opening, you would have vibrations happening with the electromagnet. They would be sent by the wire, and they would be received, uh, uh, and they would be converted uh, to uh, um, air vibrations that would go to person's ear. So this would be a microphone as a transducer. This would be a processing unit. This would be a link. This would be a receiver, and there would be transducer right here. So uh, the, our model, the general model of how telecommunications work, still um, still works. Uh, tip and ring. Uh, when uh, when you're using regular signal wires or um, any kind of connections that you're going to do on your breadboard, or maybe you already are doing or have done already in your other subjects, other classes, uh, usually you would see plus and minus connecting uh, or be a ground reference and plus. Now, uh, the terminology uh, when it comes to telephony uh, is a little bit of a, a little bit, uh, um, I would say, technical lingo uh, that was established simply because things were done on a regular basis and there will be so many of them. Uh, and so there will be a word of its own created. So tip and ring would be instead of using plus and minus or ground and plus or ground and minus in this case. And we're going to take a look at how that happens. Okay, so you remember those, um, <coughs> uh, those early telephone exchanges like here? Uh, all right, one more. All right. <clears throat> so uh, over here, there would be uh, the operator would operate with a something that's called a patch cord, and the patch cord would consist of a cable uh, that would have two wires in it, and that would be uh, that would be terminated on both ends, one end and the other end somewhere else, with something that is called a quarter inch jack because the jack is quarter inch in diameter. So uh, over here, the diameter of this would be a uh, quarter inch. So that's what that's what we so said quarter inch tip ring and sleeve that would be the uh, that would be the phone plug. 
Uh, if there are any guitar players or musicians, uh, those type of jacks are still being used for audio patching in the in audio industry, right? Some of these trying to get in, let's admit them. There we go. All right. <clears throat> uh, so this one here, this jack has three prongs. So it has three wires. The cable is three wires here. Tip, that would be this part of that, and a ring. And if there was no sleeve, this ring would just continue on. So just a tip and ring. Sometimes you have tip, ring, and sleeve. Okay. Uh, then uh, they will give you something that would be a balanced type of a signal. And uh, we talked about what balanced signal is in our last lecture. Uh, okay, so uh, signal ground, that would be the ground reference, would be uh, transmitted or uh, established by the sleeve part of it. And the ring would be negative part of the signal, and the positive part of the signal would be taken care of by the tip. So this way you would be able to establish a balanced signal. However, for the telephony, it would just be used uh, tip and ring. So in telephony, we're only, con we're only um, um, talking about tip and ring. Mm -hmm. Tip and ring, how do they work? Right. Tip would be green color and ring would be red color. I have a telephone here. I'm just not going to pick it up. Um, now, <clears throat> uh, how is this, uh, how is this uh, solved in telephony pots, plain old telephone service? As you could see, normally you would assume that the tip would be the negative part of the signal, but it's actually positive. And the ring would be more negative than the, than the, tip the ring is on the negative side so the signal instead of being carried on the positive versus the ground the signal is being carried on the negative part of, uh, uh, in reference to ground the reason for that is um, uh, originally when uh, when the polarity was ground would be ground and the signal would be positive when the wires were uh, stretched along the railroad tracks, uh, there would be copper wires, and those copper wires would corrode a lot. So uh, the way to remedy that would be to reverse the polarity, and the ground would be just a ground level, and the signal would be carried on the, uh, on the negative part. This would prevent the corrosion of the telephone lines. That was the reason why this thing was invented uh, that way. Or, or taken that way technically, uh, and it stayed that way. So tip and ring, when it comes to tip and ring, tip would be the ground, um, uh, tip would be the green, and the ring would be the red wire. Now, how is, uh, uh, how is this uh, uh, solved here? Now, the ring would be uh, carrying the signal, and let me just uh, gather my thoughts here. When the telephones idles, the plain old telephone system, as this would be uh, as just a, just a telephone that you buy at Walmart, you plug in the phone, uh, phone line on the phone outlet for phone jack. Uh, and that would be the telephone that we would use if you ordered just a regular telephone service from our telephone provider whatever that is. Uh, in our case, it's mostly Bell, but there are other companies right now that they're allowed to provide the telephone service. Uh, in other parts of the world would be uh, AT&T, mostly in the States, or Telus, uh, and other companies, uh, big or small, that would uh, be allowed to provide the telephone service. Now, that telephone outlet is independent of the power that is provided to your house. So when the power goes down, that telephone outlet still works. 
It is because the battery is supplied, the battery is supplied by the telephone exchange office. This would be the little tiny buildings around your neighborhood. Uh, in our area, there will be just a building standing, no windows, uh, look like a small house. Uh, no windows, just a door, uh, and uh, it will be uh, like a bell. Uh, uh, bell Canada written on top of the building, uh, at the face of the building, okay? So the power to the telephone outlet is provided by, from that building, from the circuitry of that building. And it idles at 48 volts DC. That is important. The telephone line at idle state when it, nothing is happening if you unplug it and take a voltmeter to the prongs of the telephone outlet you would read something around 48 volts dc when the phone rings in order to make the phone ring you have to provide at least 90 volt so the the phone line uh, the phone line would jump to 90 volt DC. Now, um, it is not as dangerous as the regular uh, plug uh, that you plug in your TV because the regular plug is supposed to provide a lot of current. It's a service type of an outlet. Service means power. So you're providing power to your TV, power to your refrigerator, power to whatever, your, uh, your vacuum cleaner or blender or toaster. So that actually can hurt you a lot. Now this uh, 90 volt DC, if you're holding across, it's going to give you a bit of a jolt. Uh, of course, if you hold it for too long, yes, it is going to hurt you, but, uh, but it's a very low power type of a, um, uh, terminal. So, um, uh, so technically it can hurt you, but, uh, but it's because it's such a low power, uh, the safety regulations are a little bit different than the safety regulations when it comes to the power outlet. Okay? So when the phone rings, the line jumps right up to 90 volt DC. That is what is, the, then the telephone sets uh, that you buy at Walmart or uh, Source or any other hardware store uh, are made in such way that if you provide 90 volt DC <clears throat> into that, then it is going to ring. The polarity, if uh, so, the, the telephones also have internal circuitry that if you by mistake reverse the polarity at the outlet, the phone will still work. How is that uh, solved? It is solved by uh, installing a bridge rectifier inside the telephone set. So it doesn't matter which polarity it is, the telephone will still work. Some circuitries, some circuits are actually sensitive to the polarity, so the telephone outlet is supposed to be wired correctly always, and they're testing devices to check for that. Uh, but uh, if this comes to just a regular telephone, if the line is reversed by mistake, the telephone will still work. Okay? But uh, things as uh, modem or other devices might be sensitive to the polarity of that. Okay? Okay? So we keep going here. USOC. What is it USOC stands for? It stands for Universal Service Ordering Code. That has to do with the way things are wired and the colors that are associated with that. This is a regular telephone jack. Uh, and that's what it looks like RJ11. RJ11 looks like this. RJ11, that is basically the type of jack that is in your outlet. This is a splitter. Uh, inside this little box there is just a regular hardwired splitter so you can plug in two phones into that and they will be connected in parallel. Okay? RJ stands for registered jack. Okay? 
Now you saw RJ wiring configuration. <clears throat> now uh, common types of register jacks would be in telephony would be RJ11 and RJ12. RJ11 would have um, structurally it would look the same just as that but you see the two outside prongs are not uh, used so there's one two three and only four prongs over here same as here one two three four and two outside will be five and six that would be rj12 so physically structurally they are the same it's just how they are wired they're using two two additional prongs for signaling wiring configuration all right so this is the front view of the jack and the pins we are counting as such one two three four five six we just count from left to right just if you were writing now when it comes to telephone wiring it is a little bit different the we are uh, uh, in telephone in, in telephony we are not talking about wires uh, the technical lingo is pairs simply because one pair of wires would carry one telephone line so instead of talking about wires the technical lingo established itself uh, into be called uh, either tip and ring of a pair or when it comes to wiring we will be talking about pairs how many pairs do you need to service that building how many pairs do you need to service that house uh, and so on uh, so the pairs are with the USOC configuration universal service ordering code register jack wiring configuration usoc is different than the data wiring which we're going to talk about in our next lectures but today we're going to talk about the usoc configurations now if you can see here this is the old way uh, old uh, original wiring configuration you would have pair one would be here then you will have pair two going outside of pair one and pair three would be outside of so you just of of those two so you just go outwards the if you trace the wires you would look you would see that pair number one occupies the two middle prongs that's pair number one then you go outwards to add more pairs Pair number two would be outside of pair number one. And you go more outwards would be pair number three. And if you want pair number four would be outside of those. So basically you count like this, pair number one, pair number two, pair number three, pair number four, or so on. That's how you, uh, that's how you uh, count the pairs. And the color code, uh, if you just look at this uh, part right here, I'm just gonna wait for the phone to stop ringing. There's somebody's cell phone is ringing right now. Okay. Hello. Uh, all right. So the old way, the the original wiring configuration color code would be um, green and red tip and ring okay. and then would be pair number two would be yellow and black or black and yellow you see they're exchanged so tip and ring tip and ring tip and ring if you just look at it uh, once you download uh, this uh, presentation in the pdf form at 11 o'clock it's going to be available for you so you can analyze that just look at it and analyze it i'm just telling you how to look at it right now now uh, the new color code configuration is um, the, basically the 25 pair color code 
and we're looking at the group color of white. You see all the wires are white with different colors. So the first three pairs of the 25 pair color code would be, the group would be white. So it would, and then the designation color would be blue, right? then it would be orange, and then it would be green, and then it would be brown, which is not here. And the last pair, uh, last uh, color code configuration of this white group would be something that's called slate. And slate stands for gray. The reason why uh, slate was chosen uh, instead of gray is because when you, uh, when you uh, write the short form of the colors would be um, mostly, um, three letter configurations. So it would look something like this, blue, right? then it will be orange, be green, it will be brown, and then would be gray. But if you say gray, it would be too close to the three kind of three letter configuration of green. And when you have construction documentation, sometimes uh, documents get dirty and there's some blobs and things on the thing. So uh, to avoid the confusion, um, the color slate, which basically equals to gray. And that would be the fifth pair of the white group, of the first group. One, two, three, four, five. Every color group color has five designation colors. And this repeats blue, orange, green, brown, slate, blue, orange, green, brown, slate. We will talk about this in the next few slides. So <clears throat> uh, the USOC configuration is, I'm going to repeat again, the old way, the original wiring, you would still see some of that in the old installations would be the green red pair then with the black yellow pair and it'll be blue and white pair so this would give you three pairs pair one pair two and pair three and in the use of usoc configurations the pairs are counted as far as wiring pair one pair two pair three and, and so on it works different in the data wiring when we talk about it data or the t568 type of a configuration, but now we're talking about the, the, the USOC configuration, which is the universal service ordering code. Okay, now keep going. Oh, okay, but basically I'm gonna go back a little bit here. And that translates in the new uh, coloring code, which would be the colors of the white group. This would be white group. Blue, orange, green, brown, slate. And you can see here, blue, pair number one, pair number two would be orange, and pair number three would be green. So this uh, RJ11 jack is um, capable of three pairs, actually, Sorry, RJ11 is capable of two pairs. This will be RJ12. Not going to get uh, hard on you with, when it comes to that. Uh, what's the difference between RJ11 and RJ12? If you get into the business, in the industry, uh, you'll just know that by heart. It's going to come by itself to you. Okay? I'm just telling you right now. Uh, so this is how we count the pairs. So, some, why, why is this uh, uh, used like that? So normally the telephone cord that you plug into the regular uh, house telephone outlet would normally have just the first pair, just one. And some of the cheap telephone cords, you're going to notice that they only have the red and green. All the other ones are not used. And it would, that red and green would be connected to the middle prongs of the jack. So I will be the first pair, first pair, second pair, and so on. So the first pair, one pair, only the first one is being used. And that's how the telephone works. The, um, 
in the early days, earlier days, uh, not that far from now, uh, backwards, uh, there would be telephone systems that, uh, for example, small doctor's offices and so on, uh, there would be a bigger telephone that they would be able to purchase. And like, for example, the uh, doctor's office would order maybe two or three lines. So instead of having a bunch of telephone cords plugged into that telephone, you will have one bigger outlet, RJ12 maybe, that's capable of three pairs, and you will have the telephone cord wired with all three pairs, plug that in, and the telephone, that bigger telephone will be wired so you could service three lines and you would just press the button which line you want to uh, activate. Okay. So that's, uh, that's, that's the reason why those uh, different register jacks were developed in different wiring configurations. Yeah. All right, so RJ14 telephone jack, surface mount. Uh, and over here, see those designations, RJ11, RJ12, RJ14. Uh, don't pay attention too much to that because this one would here, this would be wired as RJ, uh, RJ11. Yeah. Because uh, how do we know that? Uh, it is because um, you only have two pairs. All right, and over here you would have red and green connected to the two middle prongs. And here's the red and green right here. Those what lines are coming in. And if you connect, if you are connecting only one line, you would only connect the red to red and the green to green, or uh, you would translate this color code into that. And then if you want to order, uh, if you want to uh, connect another pair, you would use the next would be black and yellow, right? As far as tip and ring. This is something that's called a surface mount jack. Usually those would be mounted around the baseboards on the, just by the floor, on the wall, on the lower part of the wall, or sometimes on the walls. Um, <clears throat> this is just another representation of that. It's just a different picture. I just want you to look at different uh, visuals here so you can relate the color code. Uh, see, this is uh, pair number one, tip and ring, green and red. And then it will be pair number two, it will be black and yellow. And then pair number three would be white and blue. And pair number four would not be connected because uh, this jack would only be capable of three pairs. And if there was bigger jack, yes, you would have another uh, set of colors. Uh, and I'm not even sure uh, anymore uh, what those colors were because later on from now on, we're just gonna concentrate on up to few pairs here. And then you're going to uh, use this color code uh, from now on. Okay. Now, let's keep going. Uh, when next time you're in lab, take a look at that uh, wall by the cage, the, uh, the storage cage. On that wall, I have mounted something that's called a demarcation point. You can still see those boxes along the side of the houses. This is where the service comes in. Demarcation point basically means a point of entry, uh, also known as demark. So when you are going to, if you get the job uh, in telecommunications, doing telephony and anything that has data related, quite often you will be uh, also connecting uh, modems and whatnot to the uh, existing telephone lines. And when you go to, uh, to do a service call, uh, or a new installation, you would uh, ask um, the building manager or whoever you're talking to, your point of contact, you'll be asking where the DMARC is. And usually they would point you to some electrical room on the side of the building. Uh, so you will see things like that, usually on the outside of, uh, of the residential buildings. Now this demarcation box, is capable of two lines and they're actually marked red and green 
right? So you would have the lines uh, coming in uh, from here. That would be the lines from the city. And uh, they would go uh, and connect here. This would be line number one, for example. So there would be red and green, tip and ring. And another one, red and green, tip and ring. You, you, this is a red line. I'm not sure if you can see it or not. So this is a red wire here. This is a green wire here. So this would be one pair. This would be the other pair. And they're connected into this jack. And now you can unplug that line because this, and you can plug the other. So it will be one line and there will be another line. And these are connected to the screw terminals that you run the wire towards the inside of the house. And you would just run the wires and you connect those lines to the screw terminals right here. So this would be one screw terminal. You can connect it to this one or that one. Uh, so it would be the uh, green wire. And over here, it would connect the red wire to this one or that one. They see they're all connected here. So that would be line one or line two or there will be another line. So this little uh, demarcation point is capable of two lines. Notice that there is that one terminal here that connects both of those lines, and there's a big green wire connected to it. And that basically is a ground. That goes right to the ground. And this part of that serve as a, serves as a lightning protection. Any wire that is outside of the building has to be lightning protected. So the lightning protection is done like this, with this lightning protection uh, part of this demarcation point. And beyond the lightning protection, there go the lines that, uh, that enter the house. And they are wired uh, in various different ways. And I'll show you the correct way of wiring telephone in the house. Now, this is a different demarcation point. We are also going to play with the 25 pair, uh, something that's called a BIX, B -I -X, uh, terminals. Um, and let's say over here, this, these are the lines coming from the city and they are terminated on the frames here. So it will be pair one, pair two, pair three, and so on until 25 pairs. Now, over here, you could see this is a hundred pair wire. It's a very thick wire that contains hundred pairs, which means it contains 200 wires in there. And in a specific order, they're connected to those frames. And there will be pair one, two, three, and so on, according to the color code that we'll talk about in a few seconds. So this would be first 25 pairs, there will be second 25 pairs, there will be third 25 pairs, and the fourth 25 pair portion of that, altogether 25, 25, 25, and 25, that will give you 100 pairs. And over here, you would have lines that are going towards the building, and over here you can see 25 pair cable, which is terminated across one of those. Who knows where it goes? Could be one of those, or it could be this one here, uh, right here. Now, those would be just cross-connected to these frames. This is a cross-connect wire. You punch those wires on this side, then you flip them around so that becomes the rear, and you grab the pairs from the front of the frame, and you cross-connect them onto the other frames. So this is just a double cross connection here. So there's wires coming from the city, terminated on these frames. Over here, they are cross connected into these frames. And over here, they're also cross connected that are going towards the building. Right. You can only see here one 25 pair cable, which is terminated either on this one or on that frame right now. I'm not sure where the other frame goes, maybe to one of other ones that are going to maybe a different floor or so on. So that's also 
uh, demarcation point. Those two little boxes here, these are the T1 connections uh, that has to do with the internet connection. Right? And they're also terminated uh, uh, into some of those frames that those that signal is carried to some um, store. This looks, to me, this looks like a uh, communication room in maybe a small mall. Okay, so uh, maybe uh, let's say there are a few lines that are going to some secondary D marks or endpoints of entry, and those uh, those wires are distributed to uh, to different uh, different like for example uh, locations in the mall. So let's say uh, lines one to five are going to some shoe store that uh, that is somewhere in the mall. Then the uh, lines uh, 11 to 15, uh, they're going to some other store, maybe some shopper's drug mart. Maybe they have another 20 lines going to Walmart or 30 lines going to Walmart or something like that. Okay, so, uh, so this is DMARC point. That will be the first DMARC point, point of entry. These are coming from the city, terminated here, cross-connected. Cross-connected is also cross-connecting is a very popular technical lingo that I want you to remember. These would be cross-connecting, running a wire from one point and cross-connecting it somewhere else. And from here, you'll be cross-connecting it somewhere else. So cross-connecting, it will be cross-connect wire. This will be connect, called cross-connect wire. Now, we're going to take a look at something that's called DSL, dry loop, and pots filtering. We still have 15 minutes to go. This uh, is a very familiar device. You probably have seen that uh, in residential applications. This would be the DSL filter. And this would also be a DSL filter. They do the same thing, but this one on the right here is a little bit more sophisticated. What happens is that sometimes the telephone line is also carrying a, excuse me, <coughs> its uh, telephone line is also carrying an internet signal. On the same pair, there will be a voice circuit and there would be superimposed internet signal on the same circuit. So what happens is that when you pick up the phone, you will hear the tiny little buzz, uh, which would be the internet signal. And you guess you can still talk over that, but it's very annoying. So you don't want to have that, so you need to filter this out. So basically, uh, when you have the phone line coming into the house and they're distributed to different outlets, all that signal, both uh, voice, and the internet signal is distributed to all the outlets around the house. And if you want to plug in just a telephone to that outlet, you would uh, connect that filter. You would plug this end to the telephone jack that's on, on the wall. And over here, you would plug in the telephone and this device would filter out that internet signal uh, and you only be able to talk on voice. Uh, now, this device here is also a um, POT filter or a DSL filter. And DSL, by the way, stands for Digital Subscriber Line. So that's internet signal. Right? So uh, instead of plugging this into every single outlet where there is a phone, you would install this somewhere at the DMARC point or where all the phone lines are coming in. And you would install a tip and ring with the whole line, original line that coming in, you would either plug in here if you want to use screw terminals, or you would have the option of just plugging it in into here. So this is the same as that. You would choose. If you just want to use the bare wires and use screw terminals, you would terminate it here. Or if you have a wire or, or, or output to plug in and you just want to use the telephone cord, my mouse is running out, uh, uh, then uh, you will plug it in here. So this and that is the same thing, either or, for your convenience. And then the internal circuitry would split the signal and you would have two outputs. So this was the input part and there will be two outputs. And over here, if you want to grab that output from this device, this would be filtered out signal. The voice would be cut off from here. It would be just the internet signal. 
and over here it will be just the voice. So from this, you will plug in to the distribution type of a system um, that would um, connect just the phone lines for the live phones, for the voice phones. And this one here, you would plug in, the use would just go to the modem, only to the modem. So there will be no ringing associated with that, no that, it's, this will be just a modem signal. So over here, out of this one, the signal is considered a dry loop. It goes to modem. And dry loop is a telephone signal that only contains the internet signal. Sometimes what people do is that everybody has their cell phone right now. Uh, years ago, not that long ago, uh, people would still, and people still have their landlines, which would be the regular telephone in their house. So the signal would con connect and it would have voice circuitry and the internet circuitry. Now, people have cell phones right now, so they don't want to pay the money for the landline because everybody in their family has a cell phone. So, but they still want to have the internet signal. So just a DSL, which will be just stands for digital subscribers line. Uh, and they just want to, yeah, we want to have a telephone line, but we don't want the voice. We don't want to plug in the regular phone. We just want the internet signal to it. So that would be considered as a dry loop. Yeah. There is no dial tone on the dry loop. It's just that buzzing tone that's, uh, uh, that's associated with the internet signal. Yeah. So <clears throat> there are two types of loops that are commonly used. One is called dry loop, and we just talked about that. And the other one, because I said not the dry loop is not to be confused with a hard loop. Okay? Dry loop is different than a hard loop. So we have the DSL, stands for Digital Subscribers Line. Dry loop, we know what that is. And then we know what POTS filtering is, plain old telephone system filtering. These two are filters that uh, split the signal between the voice lines and the internet lines. All right, so uh, dry loop and a hard loop. Uh, on the dry loop, dry loop is a POTS line with just a DSL signal, a telephone line with no voice or dial tone. Used when subscri subscriber wishes to purchase the internet only, but no telephone service over a regular telephone line. So, <laughs> there's the telephone ring. Uh, so, this would be the outlet that is connected to your home, and that would be the digital parts filter, or sometimes you wouldn't even you would not even need that if it's just a dry loop. So you could just skip this part, and this would plug in straight to the modem. And from the modem, you would have the uh, signal that goes to your computers. And of course, the modem is plugged into the wall. Now, hard loop is a different type of a loop. And we will study that a little bit later on, but I want you to have the two pictures for now, just to see the difference. A hard loop is a direct feed from transmit pair to receive pair, but that has nothing to do with the telephone system. It has to do with the data signal, computer signal. That's the signal that goes from your router or your modem into your computer or from the computer to your hub, or from the computer to the switcher, or from computer to computer. This is an RJ45, which is basically a register jack. Looks like a telephone outlet, but it's a little bit bigger. It's the data jack. And the data jack has transmit pair and receive pair. So the signal goes both ways. On, it uses two wires. One pair is transmitting a signal, one is, or, or depending on which end you're in. One, one pair transmits the signal one way, the other pair transmits the signal the other way. You can connect that to a, to a jack, and you can just feed the transmit into receive. You just connect them. Okay? Uh, 
Okay, and that is used strictly for diagnostic purposes. So sometimes you might, uh, uh, you might uh, be sent for a service call and they're going to ask you, um, because you'll be calling the service company, Cisco or other company, you'll be calling them and they'll instruct you to plug in a dry loop into a certain outlet. And uh, once you plug that in, on the other side, they will do their, oh, they will do their magic on the other side with their keyboard and their monitor. Do they run the diagnostics and say, okay, we see the signal, whatever the measurements they do, and you can unplug it and plug the rest of the signal, just for diagnostic purposes. All right, wiring configuration, just before I let you go, we still have five minutes. So, <clears throat> wiring configuration. The old way would be a daisy chain configuration that would be considered just like this here. There will be telephone pole here, there will be DMARC point into the house, and you would run the wire from one jack, parallel connect to another jack, parallel connect to another jack. That would be the old way of connecting phones. Please don't do that anymore. Do not ever do that anymore. Uh, that was uh, okay up till late 80s, maybe early 90s. Uh, same thing here, uh, it will be called daisy chaining. It will be uh, connecting here and then coming up here, coming up here, all parallel connections. So if you pick up this phone uh, and talk to uh, somebody from outside on this, on this telephone set here, somebody could pick up in the other room and listen to your conversation and so on. You could do that. You know? Uh, right now, use the star configuration. Uh, basically, run all the jacks into one central location in the basement, probably, somewhere, usually. And then, so every single jack would home run to that central location. And from here, you can patch things through whether you want some of the telephone or the, the jacks to, to be serviced, uh, to, be, uh, to service a telephone signal, or some of the jacks you might want to use to service a data signal. Okay? Uh, you need to have that control over that. So use the star topology. We will talk about topologies in the next few lectures. But, uh, but that's, uh, you know, when we talk about the other topologies, you will, this picture will speak to you a little bit more. Uh, but uh, parallel or daisy chain, old way, don't do it. Con home run, which means run every jack independently to the central location. From here, you can do the connections or the distribution, and you can designate some jacks to be telephones and some jacks to be data. Now the RG45 jacks that look like the big data jacks, you can plug in the regular telephone uh, jack into it. And if it's wired in the POTS configuration or the user configuration, it can be used as a telephone. Um, <clears throat> or it can be used as a data outlet if you wire it uh, as, as data. Okay. 25 pair color code. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, uh, if you have other classes to go to right now, so please, by all means, go to them. Uh, uh, now, go to, according to the schedule, I know there was a bit of a confusion uh, when it comes to uh, 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 the scheduling. Uh, whoever comes, uh, look at the schedule, whoever comes to today's lab, just join me, and if you were not able to come, yes, uh, I mean, last time, just join in, uh, we should have enough spaces for you uh, today. Yeah. Most of the people, I know I made a mistake, I sent another group for, uh, for last time's lab. Uh, so by all means, uh, there were one or two people who didn't show up because, you know, so if you wish, come today. If not, uh, we will take care of you. Uh, so, so the lab that you get, uh, you can join other groups and we'll be able to accommodate you for that time. So it was my mistake, I apologize for that. Okay, so now if you have to go to other classes, by all means go. I'm just going to continue with those couple minutes of uh, finishing this. And if you want, you can just go on YouTube and uh, watch this final part of this presentation uh, on YouTube um, and, uh, on your own free time, okay? So I see, uh, see you, whoever the group is, I'm going to see you today. And then, um, um, yeah, so... See you when I see you, and I'm just going to continue with this so you can watch it later on, okay? 25 pair color code. 
Now, <clears throat> this is something as category five cable or category three cable. Category three cable is not that much used anymore. However, you can still see some of that in the telephone systems when it comes to telephony. The difference is once you download the PDF version, you will see that this CAT5 has a little bit tighter twist on the pairs. And this CAT3 has less twist on the pairs. And it's not as regular and as strictly regulated as for category five or CAT5E or CAT6 or CAT6A or CAT7. <clears throat> 25 pair color code. Now, that cable here, it's a 25 pair cable. It has 25 cables or wires in it, which means 20, uh, 25 pairs of wires, which means it actually has uh, 50 wires in it, which is 25 pairs. How the color, colors are organized is as this, as such. Every 25 pair bundle has five groups. So these are the groups. Here's a white group, here's a red group, here's a black group, yellow group, and violet group. So one, two, three, four, five groups. Each group has five designations. And remember, they repeat blue, orange, green, brown, slate. So each wire from the wire, a uh, pair from the uh, from the white group, it would have a pair, would be blue white pair, blue or uh, sorry white blue pair, white orange pair, white green, and so on. And the pair looks like there is um, um, it'll be a pair, twisted wires. Okay. And this wire would have uh, white, mostly white, with blue stripes. Right? You would see blue stripes here. And this would be a blue with white stripes. So that's how the white is uh, white uh, pair is uh, con uh, configured. And it's the same thing in the other ones. Uh, there will be white orange, white green, white brown, and white slate. So it will be the first five pairs of the white group. So this is pair number one, pair number two, pair number three, four, and pair number five. And this is how it is, how these pairs are terminated on the terminal strips that you have seen here. Right here, this will be a terminal strip. So this first five pairs on the strip will be the white group, white blue, white orange, white, white green, white brown, white slate. The second five pairs would be, which one? Would be the red group. So it would be red, blue, orange, green, brown, slate. Okay. What's the next one here? We black. Okay, then there is the black pair, black group, and it has consists of five pairs, black, blue, black, orange, black, green, black, brown, black, slate, five pairs. And here's a yellow group, yellow, blue, orange, green, brown, slate. So this, these repeat, and these are the groups. This is how we accomplish 25 pairs. Okay. So this one here, this frame, termination frame, would, con would we be able to connect 25 pairs? Here's a white group, here's a red group, here's a black group, here's a yellow group, and here's a violet group, which is like purple. Um, okay, so this will be the frame. And this would be how the frames are being used. The terminal strip, sometimes they're also called frames, and these are also called frames. So these frames, sometimes called uh, technical slang would be wafers, 
just like Belgium wafers, uh, because they look like a wafer. Uh, so, uh, so there will be 25 pairs here, 25 pairs here, 25 pairs here, coming from one location. And these would go to some other location, and this would be something that's called a cross-connect wire. So every pair should have its own designation, its own place. On this strip, these wires, this is 25 per bundle, different cables, 25 per cables, and these are 25 per cables, but they have to be punched or connected in the same way. So pair number one here would be blue, white pair, and pair number one anywhere, so here also become a blue, white pair. Now, pair number six will be a blue red of the red group, and pair number six anywhere here will also be blue red. So that's how we keep the consistency. Otherwise, if you have to connect 600 connections, you would just go crazy because uh, you would not be able to keep track of that. And this concludes the, today's lesson uh, that we were able to. Uh, <clears throat> we talked about the telephony. We know what USOC stands for. As a, as a review, USOC stands for Universal Service Ordering Code, and that has to do with the color coding that has to do with telephony, telephone type of wiring. And then there's POTS. A POT stands for Plain Old Telephone Service, which is the most basic telephone service you can order. Sometimes they're called the landlines because not a cell phone, it will be just a regular wired telephone uh, wire service. And we took care of the 25 pair color code. Now, I will see whoever I see today at the lab. I will continue with the labs today. And uh, sometime this week, I'm going to deploy a quiz that is going to be up till today's lesson. It's an open book quiz and you will have a whole week to do it. You will have two attempts, just in case you get internet dropout or something like that. Uh, so, um, because it's an open book test, I'm going to design the questions in a way that you will have to look for some of the answers because I will ask you more detailed questions than I would normally ask you if it was an, it, it was an in-class test. So, uh, either way, when you do this quiz, in-class or online, you still have to learn. And as, so, as long as you're learning while you're doing it, I'm happy and you should be happy as well. Uh, so, I'll see you when I see you next time. Thank you, and until next time.